Welcome to my channel. Those of you that are new, my name is Ashley and I am a homeschool mom to three kids. This video is part of my back to school week. All week long, I am sharing new videos each day to help you guys get ready for back to school. In today's video, I am talking about planning and preparing and everything that I do to make sure that when it's our First day back to school, we are ready to go. It's no surprise if you've been around my channel, you may have caught on that I like planning. I like lists, I like schedules, and that's just how I operate. I actually have a collab podcast coming out next week that I go into it a little bit more of why planning works for us, but it may not work for everyone. So. I'm gonna preface this video, just because I plan does not mean that's going to work in your homeschool. It works in mine and that's just how it is. So in that video, I kinda of go in more of why it works so much for us, but in today's video, I'm just sharing all the actual things I do to plan and prepare for our new school year. So I make planners for each of my daughters. They each get their own um, little planner where I plan all the daily tasks that they need to do each week. Um, how I normally do this is I plan one week at a time. On Sundays, I take about 30 minutes and I go through, um, I see what we completed the week prior and then I kind of just map it all out. And so um, I have like our subjects and then what you know my kids are doing for those subjects. Um, and so two, this helps because they can just grab their planner and they know, okay, I need to do my good and the beautiful lesson one. If that's a lesson that they need my help on, then they wait till I can help them. If it's, you know, one of their like writing lessons uh, that they can do independently, then they just go ahead and do that. They can mark it off once done. I also have their chores on here. And so any chores for that day, I'll write down. So they just know what needs to be done. Doing this one week at a time works perfect for us um, because things happen throughout the week too. Sometimes my kids do an extra lesson or sometimes we don't get to a lesson and so it's easier for me to adjust a week um, than trying to plan out you know, weeks or months at a time and readjust that way. And so this is the first thing that I always do. Um, I did do it obviously a little bit earlier than the Sunday before um, so I could show you guys this video but as well as I know what we're doing the first week. Um, it's all brand new curriculum, and so there's no surprises of where we're at with anything. And so I got this filled out. There's a couple more things I need to fill out. Uh, chores, I won't know until that day before. And then I need to fill in my daughter's book. Um, they have assigned readers, and I just don't know off the top of my head what the first assigned reader is. And so I just need to fill that in. But this is my daughter's schedule. And so this is something that I do to prepare. And so we know, okay, this is what we're doing this day. Something new I added this year was their weekly plan. And this is more of like our rotating thing. So this helps me fill that out. So we don't do the same curriculum every day. So on Mondays, this is the curriculum we do. And so what I do is I sit down, I have their bucket of curriculum and I say, okay, where are we at on Good of the Beautiful Language Arts? We're on lesson 10, awesome. And then I fill that in for the week. And I know Monday, what curriculum we do, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And so that's how I uh, plan out their weekly planners. So that's like my daughter's individual planners. Um, they also have pick lists. So we do do electives every uh, school day. And so this is just an easy on the back of their schedule. Okay, if, if it's PE day, what can I do that counts towards PE? And so that just helps um, us be a little bit more independent. I am a working homeschool mom, and so I work from home 40 hours a week. And so there are times I'm working and I need my daughters to be independent and be able to complete stuff without kind of waiting for me to tell them what's going on. We other ways I'm getting ready for our homeschool year is by like getting everything ready. Um, I work, well, I work in the finance industry, but I work in um, like training um, employees on like systems. So creating training documents, hosting training sessions. And I'm not kidding you. Every time, like I would train new hires. I, I used to do that and it would be like a two week class. Um, 
the very first day I would always have to carve out hours of like just getting people in systems, passwords, email, system settings. Um, and I always would make a joke because other trainers would be like, why do you have like the whole, you know, half of the day blocked out? And I'm like, just wait. Like, <laughs> and that's with anything, like any time um, you get a new something computer, it just takes time to get set up. Uh, we got new iPhones and Apple's really great, especially with like your Apple ID, but it still takes time to like re-sign into stuff and reset things up. And um, so what I did, cause I don't want that on our first day of school. It's, it, I just feel like we would spend too much time and get out of like the exciting of a first day of school. So what I went ahead and did is on my iPad, which um, my kids use it for school stuff because it's just easier um, for, I always have it, it's always charged, it works fast, it has a lot of memory, it's not like their little tablets that they have that just always cause problems. So what I did is I made, I don't know the proper term for this, but it's a like where you put all your apps, <laughs> that called education. And then I took every app that we use or website. If you did not know, if you go on a website on your iPad or a PDF file, there's like a little box with an arrow button. If you click on that, you can send it to your home screen and it makes an app. So like, um, which one is it? So like this, my human body unit, oops, my human body unit right there, that's a PDF document, but it looks like an app. And so when we're doing that unit, I can just click on this and it's all on my tablet for us to use. I do have it printed, but I just wanted to show you guys an example. Um, my older daughter is doing Bookshark and Bookshark has like a virtual um, like course guide, but they don't have an app. And so this, uh, we can log on and it has the teacher's guide, my daughter's guide, all of that. So that was what I did for myself. I got all of the apps downloaded that we need. I got signed into all of them. But then on my daughter's computers, because both of them have their own computers, I went and I added like in their favorites bar, all the websites. And then what I did last year is I laminated all their username and passwords, but Things change throughout the year and so we were like it just wasn't working doing it that way and so I just printed out a paper password tracker for them and so we can write their website their username and their password and so we're gonna be filling these out um, this week so they have it all written down and if anything changes they can just erase it and put like a new password or new username or whatever happens and so um, I did get that for them um, as well as uh, there was a couple unit studies that we're doing where I needed to make copies of stuff. I only bought like one activity book and I needed to copy it for my kids. And so um, I was doing that. And so for our human body unit, I made all the copies that we're going to need to do. And so just having all of this set, like I, this is for our entire unit study. And so I just know that it's open and go now. I don't need to pre print anything, make copies of anything. It's all done. And also in the intro to the video, if you saw, I just have like a little HP printer. Um, I think I paid like $20 on Amazon like four years ago because back then um, I did not work from home my kids were in school or at a level of school to where we didn't print stuff from if they needed like homework and stuff i needed it to print something for our neighborhood like i needed to put something on our neighborhood mailbox <laughs> so i just bought like this stupid 20 dollars printer this thing's a trooper i'm not kidding you so we're going on four years of having it that I have the instant ink where it just like mails you ink every month. So ink's never a problem because it knows um, automatically when to mail you ink. And so that's super cool. Um, it's printed out units, like huge units from like the good and the beautiful. Um, I mean, it takes a minute, it's, it's slow. Um, and then copies, it makes copies. Now you can do like one thing at a time. So um, I had to just stand there and keep putting things in and copying it, but it does it. I do eventually want to get, you know, one of those uh, Epson Inko tanks. The one though that like where you could put in papers and scans and it, you know, 
makes copies like multiple at a time. Um, it's just at this point in time, I buy most of my curriculum already printed and I prefer to do it that way anyways, even if I had that type of printer. So we'll see, maybe if it's like on a good Black Friday sale or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so anyways, that was, that was way off of anything. So anyway, so I've planned out their weeks. I have their, you know, reusable weekly plan for what subjects we're going to do. I made copies of what we needed to make copies for. I have iPads and computers ready to go with all the links, all the websites, all the logins. We're going to fill out the password trackers. Um, I used to make my daughter's passwords for them and um, because I could remember them easily, but now that they're, especially my older daughter, she's in fourth grade, now she has her own email address and like these are her accounts she needs to stay logging into. I want her to come up with those. And so um, she's gonna do that this week um, and get all of those written down and get logged in and make sure everything is functioning. So system technical issues are not an issue on our first day back to class. Another thing that I did that I highly recommend is, um, honestly, I thought my kids could care less about what curriculum I bought them. I mean, I tell them and I obviously ask for their input, but it's been sitting for months in our homeschool room. But there was one night where I was going through it and both of my daughters were like, oh, can we look through it? And I'm like, oh, this is actually a good idea. Let's look through it all. I'll explain what all the books are, what everything is because that would have happened the first day. We would have got so sidetracked on, ooh, what's this? Oh, what's that for? That that could have taken up a lot of our first school day. And so before you actually get into your real first day of your schedule, um, let them go through all their curriculum. Let them flip through pages. Let them ask questions. You know, that's going to be exciting one. Because as soon as my daughters did that, they're like, can we start school now? Um, and so that was fun, but then also that's gonna save that from happening on your actual first day of school. So I got these and they're so heavy. This is like the second video I've lifted this thing up and I don't know why I keep doing it, but I need to show you guys. This is where we're gonna keep my daughter's curriculum. There are these wire baskets. I saw them on Ashley from Grace and Grit's channel. She got them at Target. Um, they're on sale right now for $6 each. So I'm actually gonna get a couple more because they're so big that I'm gonna use them for all the books my daughters read. As they finish a book, I'm gonna have them throw it in the basket and that will be a way for me to track and do some videos. These are the books that my daughters read throughout the year. So anyway, so um, having all their curriculum in one spot that they can go through, get organized, but then this is just where it's at. This is their curriculum, this is what they need. They will find what book they need and get right into it. We also got all of our notebooks and journals ready. Um, we previously used a science journal. So all of our science units, we would use the same journal. It's just for like different writing activities, vocabulary words. If we watch a documentary, I normally make them like write a few sentences or facts that they learned. And so, um, this is they each did this so i bought this like fun pack of stickers from amazon i'll link it down below it was like six bucks but it's like all these funny uh science related stickers um like this i'm a science bro but it's like the chemical names or element names and then this one women belong in the kitchen and it's crossed out and it says lab i don't know just funny just cute things so each of my daughters decorated their own science notebook um, so that's all ready to go. And then they also made, um, they made a writing notebook. So they wanted where they keep all the writing for the year. Um, this is so funny. My older daughter, she cracks me up cause she has like a funny sense of humor like I do, which some of you might think it's inappropriate, but like, don't be salty. Like I always tell her she's being salty. And so she put that on there. Um, and like this one, my brain has too many tabs open. Uh, this one, oh, for Fox sake. <laughs> because, you know, we, we we try, well, my kids do not say bad words. Um, I uh, have some problems sometimes not saying bad words. Uh, I'm working on it. And so I will tr say funny things in place of bad words, like oh, Fox sake, or um, cheese and rice. Um, some other ones I don't even know because I just make them up as 
I'm in the moment. Sometimes I'm too in the moment though and things slip out. So we're working on it. But anyways, um, I thought that that was funny. And this is her math she just wanted because she does a lot of, um, she likes like writing notes and stuff. And so like she already did this. She put like a reference guide in there for um, the order of operations because she learned that at the very end of her third grade year and she's going to be using it in fourth grade so we got all those ready so yeah so they're like so the reason that i'm sharing this video is all of those things that are going to take time to do on the first day that are not actually opening up your curriculum and getting into a lesson need to be done before your first day of school is kind of what i'm saying because then that's not really like a first day of school it's like a let's get ready for school so we've done that um there's going to be a couple more things i throw in um where i want to give them each like their own set of like index cards where they're going to keep their vocabulary but i can throw those in easily to that um I got all of our supplies organized and so pencils, markers, erasers, all of that's put away. They know where everything is. Um, the last thing I have to do is get like my, um, my like teacher cart organized with like my family lessons, my teacher guides, like all of that kind of set up. Um, but other than that, we're ready to go. So we are starting school on Monday, July 25th. And man, are we excited. Uh, we can't wait. It's been like almost like I, ha I had to tell them no, we can't start school yet, which was weird for me. I'm like, why am I telling them no? But we they have camp Monday through Friday. And so there was like a day they were off camp for some reason. And I'm like, no, we're not doing one day of lessons for you just to go back to camp for two weeks. Like it just didn't make sense. So um, we're more than excited. And so I feel really prepared. I feel like that first day is going to be a real true first day. I'm still trying to like, I don't know, like not like have a party. Um, because I feel like we just had like our end of school year party, but like something to make it a little bit fun. Like, I don't know what, I don't know if it's like decorating with back to school decorations or if there's something fun we can do that day. Um, I don't know if you have ideas, leave them in the comments. I'm going to do some Pinterest um, investigating and some Amazon shopping to just kind of see, uh, you know, what we can do. Um, other thing that I wanted to mention I also started doing our read alouds again. We kind of stopped them over summer just cause like we were so busy with like traveling, vacation and camp that um, it, we were just too tired at the end of the night to be honest. And so I did start doing them again though. I, I made it a point to get us back in that habit because that was the habit we struggled with the most last year. And we all love it. We love when we actually set time aside to do it, but it's getting in that habit. And so I wanted to kind of get us back in our read alouds because we do them at night when my three-year-old goes to bed. And so um, getting him back on a strict bedtime schedule so he's not interrupting us so my daughters and i um, can get through our read alouds and so i did start that um, so we'll be doing that for about two to three weeks before we start school um, and i think that helps uh, as well just to kind of you know start structuring things back up if you got a little lenient throughout the summer all right, so like i mentioned this is part of back to school week during back to school week i'm doing a new video every day, Monday through Friday for the week, as well as every single day that topic is a collab with a bunch of other homeschool moms. So go down below, check out the playlist and watch all the other homeschool moms share how they are planning and getting ready for their new school year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will chat soon. Bye guys.